Hello everybody and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Week 9 Hall of Heroes roster. Um, this is part of the 10th anniversary event where every single week for the next few months you're, we're going to get a new Hall of Heroes and a whole bunch of 4 stars to choose from. Of course, as usual, um, we're going to be picking from the light dark units. Last week we did start um, talking about some of the main attributes in case you want to go down that route in case you don't like any of the light darks from any of these weeks. But uh, this week, I feel like we're going to kind of revisit the old method because I don't really like any of the main attributes on this one. The only one that might be worth picking is Tetra from, for, for uh, you know, the Water Mermaid. Um, Arnold, I don't know if it's... I mean, I would pick the Light Darks over Arnold. Um, and then the Wind Magic Knight, she's fusible, so you would never pick her. So Tetra would be the only option, which we could take a look at her later in the video but we're going to be going over the light assassin and the dark jack-o-lantern so of course let's not waste any time let's get into it the first unit that we're going to be taking a look at is natalie the light assassin she has universal accuracy lead where she increases the accuracy of ally monsters by 30 percent anywhere you go aka hence universal um she has pretty decent stats 102 base speed is really what we're looking at we can't really tell the base stats off of this but um Skill one exposes the weakness attack, or it's called expose weakness. Attacks an enemy and look and looks for its weakness. This attack decreases the enemy's defense for two turns with a 50% chance. Fully skilling this up will increase the harmful effect rate and the damage, which is really nice. Um, I wouldn't say you have to do it, but <laughs> I mean you don't you don't have to. Uh, skill two death verdict attacks the enemy two times each attack has a 75% chance to leave a brand and a silence on the target for two turns every three turns as well as skilling up or, 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 or you know as well as increasing the harmful effect rate when skilling this up so really nice skill too. the branding and the silence um, branding I think all of us know what branding does it increases the damage that the enemies receive I believe by 25% which for the places that you'll use her, I mean, not even in just, like, PvP content, but in PvE content, if you use her in some of those areas, branding is really big. And then silence, uh, for those of you who don't know what a silence does, I mean, it just, it forces the enemy to use nothing but their basic skill. So, this can be cleansed off with, like, I'm sure it can be cleansed off with things like Veramoss's passive, or, uh, the Harg's passive, if I recall. I think the Harg has a passive, yeah, yeah, Raccooning, but um, still really good. Preventing enemies from using their actual skills is really nice. Skill 3, Silent Reaper attacks, the, attacks and silences the enemy for 2 turns, so another silence, and if the target dies, decreases the attack bar of all remaining enemies by 100%, and silences them. In addition, decreases the cooldown of this skill by 1 turn per enemy silenced, or per silenced enemy target. Reusable every four turns when fully skilled up. So you are going to want to get that last skill up to get the most use out of her. But um, I already have so much to say about her. Usually when we're doing these, I don't ever have anything bad. Or I, I usually always have something bad to say about each and every unit. Because a lot of these LDs seem to not just... They just don't get messed with at all. But um, Natalie actually, her, all of her... I like every part of her kit i mean skill one defense break that lasts for two turns um that's already a really good skill two or, or skill one plus you can increase that harmful effect chance skill two is a branding and a silence which is really big um brand, again the branding can be useful everywhere you go the silence can be useful especially for places like um, I mean, if you decide to use her in TOA, I mean, that's not a reason to bring her there. But places like Labyrinth, maybe, or guild, or uh, PvP content, guild content, really nice there. So, very useful skill, too. And the last skill, again, a silence, which potentially has the chance to be an AoE silence if you can kill the enemy. On top of that, decreasing the attack bar of everybody. That's really good. That's a really good crowd control skill. Um... And on top of that, being able to reduce the amount of turns this is on cooldown per enemy silence. I mean, this is a pretty big skill 3. Um, we would have to test her, but she she has potential to do crazy things. So, um, I don't know. what I, I just don't have anything bad to say. 
I mean, for what you're going to use her for, you're going to use her in a lot of places. You can use her in a lot of places if you decide to get her. Not saying that you should, but you can. Um, what would I build her on? I mean, obviously you're going to build her on damage. I think you want to get the most out of that skill 3. So, if you decide to build her early on, you can go Fatal Blade or go Rage Blade. I wouldn't really go Violent. I would try to get as much damage out of her as possible. You could go Speak Crit Damage Attack, but I wouldn't... I would probably go Attack Crit Damage Attack, but I see nothing wrong with Speed Crit Damage Attack. Um, we'll give her her rating in a bit. Let's look at the monster info. Uh, let's look at one for this year. Okay, so this guy is responding to the first comment about the Bible. Don't care. We're here about monsters. <laughs> okay. This guy. Maybe stop talking about religion and start talking about farming. How about that? Um, we got this one. This one is attack for damage attack. Why is your attack so low? Why is your crit? Why is everything so low? Okay, you got her accuracy up. Her stats are far too low. You just threw whatever you had on. So he's kind of on the right path. I mean, attack for damage attack, but you have no crit rate. Um, everything is low. This is slightly more acceptable. <laughs> okay, really? <sighs> okay, last one. Obviously, people... Mo Why do I even try anymore with the monster info? People, of course, aren't going to build her. They're not going to have built her yet. Most people probably don't even have her. She needs a lot if you want to use her for what she does. If you want to adjust a nuke... DD, any of the other ones work better. This one hits about 35k on 1300 defense before towers. It's not enough for... What? What are you talking about? What? There's, was there scaling any different? Speed crit rate... Okay. You don't... Move on to usage. I'm done. I'm so, so tired of looking at these monster infos. Rift of Worlds on the Dark Beast. Yeah, I mean, she's a hard-hitting light unit. You could use her there. And she has, like, I guess a two-hit on her skill, too. Branding. Um, though, again, she's just there for the uh, damage. I mean, she's not really doing anything else. Which is it's fine. That's fine. Um, light Beast. Light Beast, more or less, kind of the same as the Dark Beast, except I guess she does have hard-hitting, you know, one-shotting skills. Skill, in, in Spiritual Realm, why in Spiritual Realm? I mean, she has a Branding, she has a Silence, Defense Break. There's no real reason to bring her in Spiritual Realm. Giants, I can see Giants, um, because... I can only see giants like if you're trying to uh, bring her for the attack bar decreasing, maybe. But even then, I mean, you're not proccing that unless you kill something. So, you're really only bringing her for the branding. But it's good for the waves, I guess, for like w helping with the waves, maybe. Rift of Worlds, Rift Raid, Silence, Branding, Defense Breaking, plus the big damage. Um. Yeah, statistics, Fatal Blade, Swift Blade, Rage Blade. I can understand Rage Blade. I don't know what Violent Focus is all about. Attack or Speed, correct. Crit Damage, correct. And then Attack, correct. Um, If I had to, I'd say for what you're going to be using her for, if you could build her correctly, I mean... <laughs> I would probably, I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like 8 out of 10 is the correct score. I mean, silencing on two skills, branding on skill two, you could set, You might. I mean, you can set her up. I mean, not that you need her to set herself up. I mean, but you can come in with skill two, leave your branding, then silence, then come in with skill three. 
Which then maybe you could go Violent Blade. You can go Speak for Damage Attack on Violent Blade. Set up the skill 2. Hopefully you probably Violent Proc if you don't, whatever. And then go into skill 3. But the skill 3 is uh, really big in my opinion. I mean, heck, from the last Hall of Heroes, what do we have? We had Gemini, right? You come in with Gemini, you strip all the enemies. Potentially even place a defense break. She comes in. She kills her squishy. Uh, she, you know, she aims for the squishiest unit. She kills it. Or, or destroys it, whatever. And you essentially silence the entire enemy team. And reset their attack bar. I mean, it's pretty good. It's, that's a pretty powerful thing. And, and if you silence all the enemies, you're decreasing this by three turns. So you're only going to have to wait like one or two turns or whatever. Depending on the skill ups you have in it. But she can do a lot. But let's move on to the jack o lantern Okay, so here we have Dusky, the Dark jack o lantern Now, he does have a dungeon lead that increases the resistance of ally monsters in the dungeon by 40%. Not bad. He has pretty decent base speed. Um, his skill 1 attacks an enemy 3 times. Each attack has a 30% chance to decrease the enemy's attack speed for 2 turns. This attack will do more damage according to your attack speed. This is pretty good. This could be useful in places like... Uh, like Punisher's Crypt, where you need attack speed decreasing, and he's going to have an attribute. I guess technically he has both attribute advantage and disadvantage, but still, attack speed decreasing is always a good skill one. Skill two increases the attack speed and critical rate of all allies for two turns, every three turns. Again, another good skill two, especially for Punisher's Crypt, increasing the attack speed of your team. You want to decrease the... Uh, or you want to increase your attack speed as much as possible while preventing the enemy from moving as much as possible. I mean, when you look at, a uh, gosh, when you look at some of these Punisher's Crypt teams, you see, like, you have, uh, the Wind Lich's, uh, Wind Lich there, because all of his skills will allow him to decrease the attack speed of the enemy, aka the Punisher. He essentially kind of helps with that, where he has a decreased attack speed here, and then he increases your attack speed here. But, I don't know, it's just a thought. Um, passive. If your turn ends without attacking an enemy, a shield that is proportionate to your level... And, wait. A shield that is proportionate to your level and lasts for three turns is generated on allies? Why do they word it like that? So, essentially, for three turns... Or you'll get a shield that lasts three turns that is generated on all allies if your turn ends without you attacking someone. So, essentially, if you're stunned... You can generate this shield, or if you use skill 2, you'll generate this. So, it can happen quite often. So, you really do want to get the skill 2 um, skilled up. While having the shield, all damage you deal is increased by 50%. And then the shield amount increases when fully skilled up. Oh, okay. So, he's actually not bad at all either. They're both really good units. I mean, I can already see him as an amazing Punisher's Crypt unit. I mean, shielding, damage dealt increases if he has a shield. Which I wonder if uh, this passive works with uh, shield runes. So, like, if you enter the battle with, with a shield rune, like, if you give him, like, I don't know, like, rage shield or violent shield or whatever, and you build him on, like, speed crit damage HP or speed crit damage attack, Technically, that shield rune that he has on him should give him a shield, right? I don't know. He's good for Punishers. If you pair him up with the Fire Anubis or any unit that has shielding on them, like maybe even like Wusa, whatever. Really good unit, I'm assuming, because big damage, potentially. Potentially. Um, He has a lot of usage. I don't know. Like I mentioned earlier, you could really... Do a lot of like uh, theory crafting with this guy. If you go rage, obviously like rage blade, or like I mentioned earlier, rage shield to take advantage of that passive, that could work. Oh god, no. <laughs> hmm. You could get a lot out of him, but speed crit damage attack or speed crit damage HP seems like the way you would go. But let's look at monster info. Okay, so I have a couple comments here from this year, thankfully, all of them today. So we'll take a look at a couple of them. So Dusky Dusky by Patchy Mari. He's on speed attack attack. Um, here's the thing. 
I would have gone speed crit damage attack. And even if you had to uh, give him like 50% crit rate, that would have been fine because he does buff himself with a crit rate buff. So you could have done that and still managed to get HP and crit damage. I mean, the fact that you went double attack and you still have no attack on your stats is crazy. But um, blue rune, that explains a lot. This one, I don't really like. Um, this, wow, okay. And it's not like, I mean, this is a blue rune, so I don't like it. But if it were like a purple rune with like these substats, that would have been a good rune, just not for him. Again, this is like a, uh, like a frond rune or something. None of these, okay. But you got him skilled up in the places that it mattered, so that's cool. 142 speed, that's nice. Okay, Okayly Built Dusty by Lost Moon. Oh my gosh, speed, HP, HP. We're not even going to talk about it. Great by Strawwell. Am I the only one who has a vision? <laughs> this guy is good. Oh yeah, level 12? Are you sure about that? Very good for protecting, passive is super good on stun bosses. Overall W. Maybe I'm just building him wrong. I see him like... I could see that you could throw on some him on some damage. Rift of Worlds frontline tank. I could see that frontline tank. Um, Light Beast. In the back row. I wonder why. I mean, why not just have him in the front row if you're going to build him like a tank? Necropolis. Necropolis, yeah, he has tons of multi-hits. He could throw him on some revenge. And then he'd be able to revenge multi-hit. Um... Attack speed and crit rate. Yeah, actually, I could see it for Necropolis because that attack speed um, will help with getting more turns out on the Necropolis boss. So if you get him for Necropolis, for that specifically, if you manage to get enough runes, runes from Necropolis, I would throw him on Triple Revenge. Why not? Punisher's Crypt, like I was mentioning earlier. So this guy, Fuko, um, he has attack speed on all of his things. So... Dusky's almost like him in that sense. And then Rift Raid. Um, you'd... What are you bringing him? I guess you're bringing him for the shield. The passive shield. Because you do get stunned a lot. But the problem is uh, there's Oblivion. So you might not be proccing that shield as often as you think. But the attack speed slow is nice. And uh, Water or Ice Beast. I can see for the attack speed increasing effect. Wind Beast. I don't know why. Um, Fire Beast. I don't know why. Other than that, yeah, so statistics, Swift Energy, Swift Blade, Swift Shield, Violent, Swift Shield, again, I mentioned the shield earlier, speed, crit damage, heck yeah, heck yeah, <laughs> thank God, thank God, oh my gosh, I was about to be so disappointed in people, so uh, before we go and make our decision, let's take a look at Tetra. Okay, so me earlier I mentioned that if you didn't want to pick out of those two, you could potentially pick Tetra. I don't think Arnold is a better choice than Tetra. I don't know. Maybe some people will disagree with me. Um, and obviously, I can't even remember her name, but the Wind Magic Knight is fusible. So I would go with Tetra if you don't want to go with the other ones. I mean, she has a passive cleanse in a way where uh, all the harmful effects on your allies are reduced by one turn. And then she also heals an ally every turn. So you could throw her on a violent violent will and she'd be pretty good in places like siege or pvp but um yeah skill two removes all harmful effects on the ally target and casts a shield that is proportionate to 25 percent of your max hp for three turns every three turns the shield when fully skilled up and the shield uh, shield amount increases and then this strips the beneficial effect from an enemy as well as dealing damage according to your max hp but I would still go for one of the LDs because as good as she is, I think the LDs are better. Okay, so here we are back at the uh, page, right? Now, again, you could pick Tetra. If, we're gonna, if you're asking for my honest God opinion and you're trying to pick between the two LDs, I'll tell you this. When I first look at these two, I like both of them. 
I mean, they're good in their own ways, and depending on what you need, you'll pick a different unit. Um, I think, like, if you're trying to do, like, Punisher's Crypt, maybe even Necropolis, I guess, if you want to bring him for Necropolis, then you would go for uh, Dusky. But the Assassin is also good in her own way, where there's a lot of branding, silencing, and attack bar reduction. She has the potential to get out tons of damage. If you're looking for guild content, PvP content units, I think Natalie's better. If you're looking for PvE units, Dusky's better. I think Dusky will help some people in Punisher's Crypt. Um, I mean, just his passive shield really is good. But if I had to give you an ultimate choice... I'd say go uh, with Dusky. Go with the Dark jack o lantern If you go with the other one, if you go with Natalie, I do not blame you at all. But my opinion is that uh, Dusky's better. Of course, <laughs> I don't need a Punish Punisher's Crypt unit, so I, I, I went with Natalie. <laughs> but Dusky, Dusky has potential to do a lot of good things. And he doesn't require too many skill-ups. I mean, he only requires the four skill up, Or not even four. He only requires one for a skill too to get that up every three turns. But um you could get more skills for a shield. But um I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe to the channel. We're close to 1k. We're literally like not even 20 subscribers off. Come on. Bye. Love you.